actually was praying before the gathering and um, I was really seeing that just um, the past is really just a construct there is no real past it's always a thought that is coming in the moment it's not something that is back there and that we we need to reach in order to do something about it and it's the same thing for the future it's just a thought that comes in the moment and it can seem to talk about another moment but it's still a thought coming in the present moment mm -hmm. and and just really seeing that whatever it is that those thoughts are saying we live them in the moment even if we're afraid of something in the future or scared of something in the past or seemingly hurt from something in the past the true hurt or true fear is experienced now and it's by just really facing that and going into that that actually we realize that the only thing there is is now and that was just a concept only a construct that is covering over the truth of who we are the discovering of over the love that we are and by releasing this concept um, we just go deeper and deeper in the realization of our true nature allowing that to be our primary experience and and everything in life is always perceived or interpreted depending on all the concepts that we have in mind so life is happening we all agree with that there are things happening over and over again everywhere all the time and the way we live it is through those filters through those concepts through those interpretation and interpretation are made based on the concept that we have in mind so what forgiveness is inviting us to do is really realizing that those are only concepts and that by letting go of this, those concepts, by really looking at those concepts and, and releasing them, then what's happening is just life is still happening. But there isn't a filter of interpretation that makes us suffering, which is truly just holding on to an identity, a separate self that exists in the interpretation I'm making, in the meaning I'm giving to something. I exist in that as a separate individual. And the fear is that if I release that, who am I? Because we don't know, actually. Then we're facing this kind of nothingness, this kind of emptiness, the space that we are. But that's why we're afraid, actually, of really allowing this recognition to be and we want to be something and they're absolutely holding on to that and so I feel like really it all comes down to the, the, the theme of the weekend because we hold on to this I thought I am somebody I am whatever I am unworthy I am worthy I am a businesswoman I am a psychotherapist I am a woman, I am a man, and we define ourselves like that so that this I that we think we are is going to be strengthened, and that's really what separation is about. But the only thing that's truly happening, whatever I'm experiencing, is that in the moment I believe in separation. In the moment I'm, I'm holding on to this I that I think I am. I am something, I am somebody, and this is this I that is the only problem, if we can say there is a problem, because it's what holds the whole world together. The whole world, the whole story of who we think we are is coming from a moment separation. Not a separation that happened 5,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago when Jesus was on earth. Not at all, it's moment by moment by moment. And so really, what we are inviting by choosing forgiveness is the total release of the past, the total release of the future by accepting the moment as it is and going beyond what we think the form is to accept our true nature. And that's what atonement is about, accepting the truth of ourself. And I feel like, yeah, this weekend is really dedicated to that, to look at whatever we believe we are and I am that thing that is covering over the I am that we are, the one that we all are, not like 
there's a one here, there's a one there, there's a one there. No, it's the same one. And it's one big giant projection. And there might be seven billion of interpretation, but only one projection. It's not I'm projecting you, you projecting this, I'm projecting that. No, it's not personal projection. It's one big giant projection of the world and an idea of separation. And in that, there is suffering. That's the suffering. It's that idea of separation. And we release it by fully accepting the moment as it is and going beyond whatever the form is to the realization of who we are. Yeah, and um, I was thinking that since this is the Hollywood and the movie industry, when you were speaking, I was thinking of uh, animation and I was thinking of the original celluloid uh, films that we started off with, the invention of, of movies. It was really just frame by frame strung together. So there's just, it's just one photograph and then another photograph and another. But when you do it fast enough, it gives you the illusion of motion. And when you were talking, I was thinking, yeah, that in eternity, everything's one, and everything's eternal, and everything's changeless. So the ego is synonymous with change. There's no change in heaven, there's no ego in heaven, but the ego is synonymous with change, really the belief you can change your identity from the eternal to the temporal. And so that one idea of change, we'll say that's what the ego is, it's just change, gets projected and makes this illusion of a motion picture. And really, it's just one moment at a time, one snapshot, one snapshot. And that's how they make animation. Walt Disney, you know, just take the snapshots and make them move and then they, Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse, you know, it's all fiction based on the illusion of, of the movement of images. So, right before we started, we were talking about the filter. It's not so much that illusion of motion that's a problem, because that's just what's been given now, that's the projection of the change, but really it's the filter of the concepts that we can clear. So we can have a clean filter while we're watching the movie. We don't have to have an identification with the movie unless we have a concept on the filter. But if the filter is completely clean, then it's just, we're back to just what seems to be a motion picture that doesn't have any meaning in and of itself. Like lesson number one from the Course, nothing I see means anything. So it seems like what we'll really look closely at is what, what do you put on the filter that blocks you from the I am awareness? blocks you from, from totally being present, because whatever you hold on the filter, whatever shadow, it will, it will skew your interpretation. And you're never upset by what seems to be occurring, you're just upset because of the interpretation of what seems to be occurring. And you have the power of interpretation. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing that can, can happen to us outside of us, but we must recognize the power of interpretation in order to be free. That's like a savor, that, that makes everything possible suddenly, just being able to look at the interpretations and say, hmm. Yeah, and somewhere the mind is so scared actually, I think, of really taking full responsibility for that, because in that freedom is right there. And it feels like the mind is so scared of actually taking all that back because as long as projection is going on, then seemingly I'm powerless. This is not about me, you know, it's others, it's them, I'm not doing anything. But taking it back is actually the way to freedom. It's really realizing that there is no one outside of myself ever doing anything. It's all just an interpretation of something that is playing out. And, and so what, what I'm really seeing is that actually in the moment when a thought comes, 
there is an, an attraction, like the Course talks about this attraction to guilt, that's really the attraction to stay a separate individual, to believe mm -hmm. that there is a real separate individual mm -hmm. who has autonomy and independence and you can be on, uh, in control of life and wanting this one to still say the same, wanting it to be the controller of life, wanting it to be the one in charge, wanting it to be the one that's going to give me everything I always wanted instead of trusting a power that is not my own but that is greater than my own that's going to give me absolutely everything not little things like specialness or special relationship or an amount of money or special kind of job or a house but absolutely everything which is truly the pure recogni recognition of our true nature and and because somewhere there's still some value given more to the separate self and to the separate individual, autonomous and independent, there's an addiction to go with the story. So there's a thought that is coming in the moment, and the thought is believed, and in that moment, there's a separate individual existing. It's not existing before, it's not existing after, it's existing again in a moment-by-moment -moment experience. And the attraction to guilt is really going with the story, taking the thought and allowing it to be a linear story that is talking about me. And I am the hero of this dream in that story. And it's very, it's beautiful. We are in Hollywood. We all want to be an actor, a hero, whatever. And that's what it is. It's like, I am the one in power. And God, no, it's not going to be for you. It's going to be for me. I'm going to be the main character of, of this movie. And so we can see that, that the going with the story, with the thought, and feeding the fantasy with the thought is an addiction. And we can start to look closely at what are we addicted by, all those thoughts, all those judgments that make up a self that doesn't exist. How do we really go deeper and deeper and deeper with that? Mm -hmm.